Guys, is Counter-Strike just Fortnite for grown-ups? Sort of. Let's get into it. It's Soviet Wombles Random CSGO Part 7. 7. 7. Hey, it's not how one digging works. One deep. One is it a CT or a seaside map? It's, it's a even... whatever side we're not on. So. <laughs> Doom wants to know: Can I do a face reveal on 100 followers? Um, I think that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wait. So, all right, followers. He might mean followers on Twitch, but I think at this point, even on Twitch, when was this video made? This was this was made. Oh, 2016. Okay. Interesting. Um, because I thought like part nine came out like last year. So it's interesting that here he's at 800,000 subs on YouTube. Now he's at, damn, 4 million. Damn, Soviet Wombo been putting in work, putting in work. And these were already pretty viral videos. So, I mean, just a testament to Soviet Wombo is just truly one of the, one of the greats, man. Dude's a, dude's a proper legend. I think that ship has sailed. That ship has sailed. That yeah. ship has sailed. Why has Soviet got an orc? Mm -hmm. There's nothing saying wants, that I can't use wants, an orc. He wants to be, right. wanna be included. I don't want to. Too late. I was going to hold it passive. Okay, this 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 frame rate is like four frames. What? What? I don't know. I'm going where you're going. Whoa, okay, I'm not gonna, no, I'm not, I'm not going where you're going. It's alright, well, pretty soon, Britain's gonna leave the EU, and then I don't have to deal with your shit anymore. Oh, man, this is... Mm, mm. God, a blast from the past, man, five years ago. We're just yeah. gonna disconnect the internet and float off into the Atlantic. Why do you have a deagle, Bobo? Because it's Thursday. <laughs> what? Bene. That's What's all the Italian I know. Bene. <laughs> What's a pasta? Pizza the pasta. Ferrari. <laughs> Ferrari, yeah. Of course, cyanide sounds out Ferrari. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I'll say this. Learning European languages is hard, or see, at least Western European languages, because so many people speak English because it's kind of a lingua franca. And the problem with that is that when I was in Italy, I would try to speak Italian, I would make it one sentence, they would hear clearly that I was an American, and they would switch promptly to English, which was fine for like customer service stuff and transactions where like I really needed stuff to happen, but it sort of meant that I never got to grow my Italian. Uh, that's why my Portuguese is so much better, is because I actually went to a city in Brazil uh, that didn't have a large number of English speakers. There was uh, hardly any. And so it meant that I had no choice but to grow the language and at least get myself comprehensible. And believe it or not, you can do it in a month if you commit to not speaking a word of English. In a month, you can be comprehended for a lot of like routine transactions, though it can still be pretty hard to do like actual conversations. It it is Italian a race? Depends on who you ask. And it's interesting because at least in the US, right, in the nineteen tens, you know, a hundred plus years ago, uh Italians were considered a uh, un-American influx of my immigrants. Uh, my great grandmother was actually disowned uh, because she was Welsh, uh, of Welsh descent, and married an Italian. Um, and so that right, and that's one of the reasons Christopher Columbus grew so much, so much in American mythos was actually because it was meant to help this Italian community that a lot of people saw as being un-American uh, to create this this message that no Italians have always been American uh, and and since the you know discovery of the continent by or at least to Europeans right they've always sort of been a part of the like American experience so it's a reshaping of the narrative to include someone who previously wasn't seen as being like fully American um, the and that was interesting because it evolved over time, right? There was a time when it was Italian immigrants. Then later on, it became uh, Eastern European immigrants. Uh, those were the ones that were seen as being undesirable or uh, not fully American, right? And over time, different waves of, of immigration from different places um, have resulted in sort of a, a, an othering 
right? And this is probably typical of every country, but I'm, I'm only familiar with sort of American history in this way, that you get this wave of immigrants, they have this slightly different culture and they're sort of like the other and people claim they're not like real americans or whatever and then over time they start to get integrated more and more into the experience and miraculously people discover oh it turns out this group of people actually has deep connections to the country going all the way back right but it happens over time um and those uh cultural contributions get sort of added to the larger american culture Say those words. You don't care what you. This is your sure job. Said. You gotta thank this guy. He's paying for your food. I'll say it. I'll say it. Hey, thank him. Say it. Thank you, Cyanide has a massive cock for subscribing to my channel. <laughs> <laughs> Can someone odd shot just to say Shut it? the no, fuck no, up. Sarno, that's a good point. We now need to reveal that we're the owners of csgolottery.co.uk.org. <laughs> don't we? Yes. I own opskins.com. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I own all of them. Every single one. I own CSGO Yeah, Lounge. CSGO Lounge. Oh, um, um, these are all the gambling websites, I assume. Yeah, I Wowhead. I, I own yeah, Wowhead. So. After H3, uh, sorry, it's not H3, it's He He, isn't it? The the, the guy, he, when he posted that, yeah. He, it is H3. Is it H3? Is yeah. it not He He? No. Oh, Sana, you fucking lied to me. <laughs> oh my god. H3. Uh, they're still, they're still, I guess, big. They're still doing well, man. This is crazy how much uh, some of these iconic creators from 2017 five years later are still going strong soviet wumble still putting out videos right h3 h3 still putting out their podcasts still putting out content um it's crazy that to see that some of these titans uh really came, came big in 2017. i would love to see the youtube sub numbers to see on the whole platform like what was that growth trajectory like i mean as you guys probably know youtube had an all-time great year last year in terms of subscriber growth no shocker there it's great content and frankly uh people over the past two years have spent a lot more time in their homes and it gave youtube a chance to show them what content is out there me you cock <laughs> fuck you it's not my fault you're a fucking idiot shut up how long were you pronouncing it he, he fought it? about he a year it. fuck you oh man that's that's embarrassing that's probably a lot of content a lot of clips of him going he he like michael jackson he he you massive cunt. Just shoot him, yeah. shoot him, 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 shoot him
Ouch. I mean, here's the thing, right? It, in 2016 or 2017, I feel like it hadn't, well, maybe it had kind of come around to this idea that like, you just got to get rid of trolls, man. If you want places to have a certain vibe, you got to cultivate it just like a workplace. If you want a workplace culture that hits a certain way, you've got to cultivate it, right? You've got to put effort into creating whatever culture you want anywhere. Right. I mean, look at a cult leader. Cult leaders just don't stumble into it. They build their cults by carefully selecting the most uncritical people, the most vulnerable people uh, who need validation. Right. Like you've got to create that cult mentality uh, and you can only do it by, you know, removing problematic elements and including and emphasizing uh, less problematic elements from the perspective of the cult leader. Obviously, cults are problematic entirely. Skill. You see that? Pure skill. Man, I don't think there's a plastic surgeon in the world good enough. Whoops. Where the fuck did you go? I, I wanted to hit the wall and I kind of over. Uh, fuck you. NASA should hire you to throw things <laughs> in their orbit. What the fuck was that? Stop with your clicking. But you, Ed Burke, it's always. Hi, my name is Ed Burke well, and no, um, I um, I am. So that mechanical keyboard, dude, I just upgraded to a mechanical keyboard. I gotta say, it's great. It's great. Mexican and um, I play a lot of CS. Yeah, I can't tell you're hiding there, dude. No, <laughs> what the fuck, man? Did you know the average woman uses her height in lipstick every five years? <laughs> what? Did you know an average person's daily fast food intake will contain 12 cubic hairs? Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> what are you reading? Stuff! What's he reading? Did you randomly Google for did you know facts? Did you know that ethyphobia is the fear of erections? He's on Z, and a tapir has the largest penis-to-body ratio of any animal. A duck and a rooster were the first passengers in a hot air balloon. Did you know Arab women oh can't initiate can initiate a divorce if their husbands don't pour coffee for them? <laughs> Did you know that a I okay. If you read something on the internet, it doesn't mean it's true. One of the things that bothers me is that or or Actually, okay, there's, there's a small problem of things on the internet that are objectively false, like 2 plus 2 equals 5 levels of false. But there's a whole bunch more things on the internet that sound salacious. They sound like a scathing tweet or like a hot take, and they only hold together if they are divorced from lots of key context. And what do I mean by that? Uh, for example, I'm trying to think of a good one that's not going to get people all triggered. Um, I don't know. Oh, here's my favorite, right? Ukraine invasion. By all, by all the, the good accounts, right? Russia and Ukraine are, are more or less going like tit for tat in terms of casualties, in, in terms of I mean, obviously not equipment destroyed. Ukraine has very few tanks to begin with. But in terms of individual casualties, it's like an even, it seems to be relatively even. Um, but when you look at Western media, right, and this includes Western social media, Western conventional media, you only see uh, uh, like sort of Ukraine victories, right? Ukraine's soldiers playing with looted gear and that sort of thing. And the thing that makes it so troubling is that not that it's not true right those are all true videos um but because they are divorced from the larger context right it presents it almost like a comically one-sided fight which is problematic for a bunch of reasons one it it sort of denatures people to the uh nature of conflict nature of war it also makes people um not understand the dire straits that the Ukraine military and government remain in. Um, and without this important context, right, you aren't getting the full picture. You're getting the picture of a, of a you know, smaller country using a larger country's military as like a shooting gallery. And that's not the case here. Um, and so you have to make sure that there's a lot of facts like this. If it sounds salacious, if it sounds scathing, if it sounds like a brilliant hot take, your first question should be, what's the greater context, right? Because people want to sell you these stories as being 
good versus evil. You notice there's a lot of that narrative. And it's you can't get much more nuanced than that because of the nature of social media. You have people's attention for one to two minutes. So that's all you can do is, is give a very simple Harry Potter-like Voldemort is evil because obviously he's the bad guy, right? Uh, Sauron is bad because he's evil, right? It's that reductive. Uh, the Russians are evil because they're bad, end of story. But if you have a longer attention span, if you can read an entire uh, book or a, a 2,000 word article, you have the opportunity to do a little bit more uh, nuance. You have an opportunity to create context, right, in which the tweet version might be true, but it doesn't give you understanding, right? In the same way that there's a difference between, let's say, for example, um, you know, you asked to solve a very complex calculus problem and someone tells you, if you see this problem, the answer is three. Well, you can memorize that and that you will have learned something true, but you won't have understood anything, what the equation means, how to actually get to the solution. It won't enable your decision making. And I think there's a lot of media that's functionally saying, here's this incredibly complex situation. I'm going to distill it down to something that's like maybe sort of true, but it it just doesn't help you understand at all or make decisions. And in democracies, right, and especially in this day and age where public opinion carries a ton of weight and in democracies where you have to use the information you have to vote, it's so important that you have not just the information, raw information, but you have enough context to gain a proper understanding. Upon losing battles, apes will tend to masturbate. Did you know that most lipstick contains fish scales? In Japan, it is completely acceptable to name your child buttocks or prostitute. Did you know that in France, it is legal to marry a dead person? It's against the law to have a pet... Right, like legal to marry a dead person probably need some more context, right? It's probably one of those cases where it's like, uh, if the person already filed, a, 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 you know, if you were already engaged and you can prove it, um, and the and you the person intended to marry you and then they die, you can have a claim to their estate by legally creating like a a fictional marriage, and, and so you're like, okay. In France, you can marry a dead guy. Like, you can walk around the graveyard and be like, I choose you, you know, when, like, in reality, it's probably something, like, in context, it makes perfect sense. But only when you divorce it from all context does it make, does it sound so salacious. What? Where's the sound? Okay. Of 12 or more cows is called a flink. The 57 on Heisen's ketchup okay? bottle represents the varieties of pickle the company once had. Actually, that's not true. That is true. No, 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 I remember that. that... <laughs> Did you know that the whale's average penis size is about 8 meters? Would you be surprised if I said yes, I know that? No. <laughs> uh, you walk yourself into some of these, man. <laughs> I got a P90, by the way. <laughs> Overdramatic death. Oh no, no! Copyrighted music! No! Oh, please don't do this to me! Wait, 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 wait. They, they added one frame for no reason into that. It's like a... It's like an editing flaw. I'm not crazy. There, there, wait. Subliminal... Neeson. This is more than one frame. Okay, if you guys don't know, the subliminal messaging was one of those 90s pop psychiatry uh, bullshit things that... Um, sorry, I just wanted to point that out there. So, okay, in the 80s and 90s, uh, was I don't know if it was the dawn of pop psychiatry, but psychiatry had gone from... Uh, it had finally made its way to the public consciousness broadly. And like everything that enters the public consciousness, like broadly, uh, it's totally misinterpreted, totally distorted, and oversimplified. Uh, look at every fad diet, right? So the result is that, you know, you ended up with these crackpot theories that people like sort of thought might be true, for example, there was a bunch of like bad movies in the 
you know, 70s and 80s about people being hypnotized and brainwashed and and people were and like secret secretly had their minds wiped, you know, and people were like, wow, this is clearly a fictional movie, but like their minds are primed then to see it as true. And so when some idiot pop, you know, amateur armchair psychologist is like there's this thing called subliminal messaging and don't get me wrong there is subliminal messaging it's possible right it's possible for example if you read a um we found that if you read a text in which old people are described as old frail senile tottering um whereas and it, then you give an actual person over 65 uh, a cognitive test, they're going to do worse than if they read a paragraph in which old people are described as wise, sage, um, uh, you know, experienced, right? Things praising age as a source of wisdom. Uh, they do better after, on cognitive tests after reading a paragraph like that. Uh, so there is there is some level of truth to some of this subliminal messaging stuff, right? It's very light, and sometimes it's very hard to reproduce, and it's not clear that the effect is large at all. Um, but it, there's some evidence that it may exist. But what the pop psychiatrists or psychologists of the world took, especially in the 80s and 90s, was that they believed that if you inserted imperceptibly short uh clips or images of like a frame or two you could program people's brains to see and believe things that weren't true like you could convince teenagers to worship satan by just being like worship satan for like two frames of your in your movie and not only was this uh it, it's perfect because it creates a fear over something you can't see or hear or touch um, and there's nothing quite as powerful to generate anxiety as a threat that is totally invisible. I'm not yeah, stabbing him. Let's shoot him. Let's shoot him. She's just showing up her knife to the stream, like showing up her welcome. What? <laughs> what? How did you miss? What the hell is wrong with you? I've definitely missed those shots. Oh no, what will we do without the eye candy? Cake, you're now the eye candy. Okay. Moan seductively for the audience. Go. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I said moan seductively, not have a fucking seizure. The bomb is down in mid, there's one in garage, and you can tell the sex of a horse by its teeth. Most males have 40, whereas females have 36. In 1386, a pig in France was executed by public hanging for the murder the of a child. Did you know? I mean, that sort of makes sense. I could see that happening. Also, like... Yeah, I could see that happening. That sloths take two weeks to digest. Will their you food. stop yes, it? No. Stop, stop, just stop with the facts, stop. But they're fun. Someone in my chat called Womble's Dignity and he was just timed out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> ah, I feel like I've had that happen. No one yeah. That seems like every Tarkov game. My babies. No one I'll have your babies. <laughs> You love my babies? Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Tom's uh, nice, Nep. See, Tom's nice. Rumble, are you expecting me to say that I want your babies? I'm just pointing out that Tom is being nice where you are not. It's common courtesy to offer to have some. <laughs> There's a little sexual harassment going on, a little bit of a hostile workplace. If I had to do this investigation, I would probably find, yeah. Want this was a hostile well, work I environment. I that I want babies from people, but not from you. Uh, Damn! Uh, uh, no. Ten points to Gryffindor. Mm. Roll Hufflepuff. <laughs> it's Hufflepuff. It's where Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff. Is Hufflepuff. The Sigma grind set. That's that's the house that they don't even let in the Harry Potter castle with the regular people, right? It's just all of these. It's not even like a house in that they work together. They actually actively work against each other. That's the Hufflepuff, right? This this the Sigma male grind set. They just all have individual rooms where they just stay online and just grind magic currency I, I don't know enough about harry potter to flesh this lore out but if you have ideas under what hustle house and the sigma male grind set house uh, of harry potter world would look like you just let me know in the comments well, the black <laughs> damn and we went 
racist. <laughs> Did you know that slugs have four oh noses? Oh my fucking god. Did you know Los Angeles' Cut. full name is El Pueblo de Nuestra Señora de la Reina de la Los Angeles de Pornicula? The skeleton of Jeremy Bentham is present at all important meetings of the University of London. Did you know that it is physically impossible for pigs to look up into the sky? Did you know catfish are the only animals that naturally have an please odd number of whiskers? Please stop it. Did you know the French language oh, has 17 I, different please. words for right. surrender? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, English sort of stretches surrender out. There's like to surrender to a concept, literal surrender. Um, I guess those are the only two I can think of. You know, bud, don't I do will fucking shoot you. Unsubscribe, unsubscribe. You unsubscribe. have unsubscribed from unsubscribe. Cyanide Fun Facts. Thank you. Thank you have now subscribed to Cyanide Fun no, no. <laughs> That guy is just pretty funny. Oh, Did you no. Wow. In the smoke. No. Got him. Pure skill. Push. Ten out ten out chin. Ah! Oh, oh my god! I wow. Wait, let's see. Shit. I got him. I can't believe I got that shot. That is, again, these are just statistically extremely unlikely. I'll be your carer, though. Where are we going? Uh, where's the bomb? Don't know. So I know that's it behind. No, fuck you. Get in. Get in. Get in. Oh, bugger, come on. I mean, so here's the thing to remember, guys, is that, yes, there is when you fire most rifles based on the barrel length and the quality of manufacture and some conditions like wind, there's going to be some, some unpredictable play from when the bullet leaves the barrel to the target it hits. Um, and those are measured in what's called minutes of accuracy. So one minute of accuracy basically is a one-inch grouping at 100 yards-ish. Um, I think that might be one and a half. But the point is, is that it's at 100 yards and it's like, it's like this, right? And it, most weapons, I don't know, it depends on the weapon, but y you can be reasonably certain that any military-grade assault rifle from the modern era is going to be between one and three. So at 100 yards, you're looking at like a three-inch diameter, maybe. Um, so when you play these games, right, and, and it, it, any sort of game where the accuracy spread gets really big as they fire the rifle longer and longer that is to uh symbolize the fact that a human being trying to control that rifle would have an increasingly difficult time of lining up subsequent shots that's all that's about and it's just meant to sort of build in the mechanic of human beings having a hard time controlling shots. But your weapon doesn't accurate, actually get less accurate. If you've seen machine guns, for example, that are mounted, locked into place um, on top of, say, a vehicle, you see that subsequent shots, every shot just follows the other one with a really high degree of precision. The jostle of those mounts can be very, very small, and you can get a very, very tight spread over distance. Come on, really? Push him. Fuck this, I'm out. We are going to have a face off. A face off. You assemble a team. Right. You plus four. Right. I will assemble a team. Me plus four. I've got waffle root tree myself. Uh, a friend of mine sure, called sure. Dick and okay. a friend of mine called Frosty. Okay. Okay. We're doing a versus game. Me versus Cyanide, and we've each picked our own teams. And mostly ZF on my team. He's got some ZF and a couple of randoms. Oh god. So we'll go B. Are you calling the shots now? I'm really? calling the shots. I don't like those. We're not losing against Cyanide. Hey! Hey! hey. <laughs> nice. Dude, they're getting butt fucked. Yeah. Go B, go B. Cross, go B, go B. Calling One across. Strats. I like calling. I'm good at strats. One across. You have zero kills. Oops. Oh, yeah. I, I, I am leading the team, okay? An aye, officer aye, does aye. not necessarily take part in the fighting. Uh huh. Okay, is that true? That's not true. Though, if an officer is adding to, like, the fire suppression, it's sort of a problem. It's it's a little true, right? Like, as an officer, you're expected to be coordinating multiple maneuver assets, communicating with hire, talking to air, uh, aircraft on station, um, managing, again, the positioning of your squad. But if you're talking about... But, like, that doesn't mean that you don't fight at all. It's, it's a tough to explain, right? The situation dictates it. Um, sometimes you've got to sling lead, right? Because you're still a part of that team. You still have to be able to obviously fight. But no, officers, he, he's... 
I'd say he's more correct than incorrect that officers uh, have a responsibility to provide the majority of their attention into the command and maneuver of their forces. That said, a five person force is not that much, right? As an off the in the U.S. military, right, the lowest officer rank, a platoon leader um, that ha or the lowest rank that has command authority is going to be your lieutenant, your platoon leader. And so they're going to have 30 people. So they're going to represent three percent or less of their unit's combat power uh if you're a five person unit then you represent 20 percent of your unit's combat power so you really can't just sort of chill oh, 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 oh. Oh, amazing he? Sure. get good he says getting good now yeah. <laughs> let's go b or something on side let's see him he's mine oh whoa he killed me Oh, he killed yeah. both of us. Oh, oh wow. god, he pushed up behind. Oh, oh wow. whoa, just shoot him! He went through the tunnel. Oh, whoa, you're dead already? Holy, what the hell? Wait for it. Oh! No, go. Oh, holy shit, Nuggets! Hacks clearly. <laughs> Hacks clearly. Damn. I'd like you to meet my friend. His name is Dicky. He also goes by the name NBK of Team Envious. Ha 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 Frosty. Hello. Frosty, Hello. who is also from Envious who is their analyst, and he analyzed my gameplay and oh. said I was the best player he's ever seen. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Unmitigated pack of lies. Unmitigating pack of lies. Okay, that's not really grammatically correct, but I'll let it pass. Okay, we should have put in the rules that you're not allowed to go and get CSGO pros. Aren't you a CSGO professional? I'm a professional CSGO player, and you are not. Um, fuck you. Anyway, it is very nice to meet the both of you. Nice to meet you too, yeah. uh, Nep, at one point, weren't you saying that you wanted to have NBK's babies? No. Uh, yes, you were. You fucking what? were. No, you no. absolutely were. No. I remember this. No. I remember this conversation no. clearly. No. That's not true. No. It's fucking true. No. Yeah, so you do a weird move. You were t spawn looking at a wall and it just came behind you and knifed you. I was trying to lull you into a full sense of security. <laughs> you first. Uh. MBK could be in there. You, you go first. Oh, yeah, I have the bomb. I have to, have to go out the bomb. Okay, you go second. You go second. You have a nice blade. Yeah. Can you stop? What does NBK stand for? Flirting with NBK. I'm also fascinated that. I mean, listen, let's be honest. If you are an, a, a Counter-Strike GO world-ranked player, uh, you're probably not getting recognized on the street, and you're probably not... Well, you may still get some groupies. Actually, you probably still get groupies. Also, like, w women just like prestige in any form. That's... Okay, sorry. That's an unfair characterization. Many women uh, are drawn not to uh, a prestige in an area that you're interested in, but they're, but I mean, human beings, right? We're drawn to people who are uh, accomplished things, right? Like, it would be cool to talk to a professional snowboarder, right? You'd want to talk to them about, like, what's it like being a pro snowboarder, right? You're drawn to that sort of person just to be like, wow, that level of achievement is pretty outstanding, you know? And I think when you have that, at least in my experience, way easier to have romantic relationships with women. Flirting with me. It will probably be less painful to stick my dick in a blender at this point. Yeah, it's because you don't believe. Sure, uh, <laughs> <laughs> NBK That's is telling you that you don't believe. It's my uh, fucking life. Where's thing? See ya. Fuck. Oh, fucking. Well oh my god. <laughs> I should boost you. Psych. <laughs> you have two on us. Hi, no. Can that me? My fight. No, not knife fight. Knife fight. Knife fight. Knife fight. Yeah. Wait, wait. Here's my. Here's my gun. Here's my gun. Knife. Knife. Knife fight. Knife fight. Knife fight. Right. Knife fight. You ready? 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 Okay. Here we go. Ready? Soviet attack. Okay. Oh, bitch. Ross, that's my strategy. Fuck you. Cyan. Wow. Cyanide knifed NBK. True. Truly. Let's just pause for the. Let's just pause and watch this for a second. Just really take it in that this happened. So you got to feel bad, right? When you're a world champ, right? Everybody's gunning for you. It's one of the reasons in jujitsu, like if you have a seminar with someone, um, a high level player, uh, they oftentimes won't roll with people because the desire to pull some funky thing and be like, I caught such and such in a sub 
is like so great that it becomes actually dangerous. Like people become reckless in their play. They tend to wrench really hard on things. It's just seen as being pretty tactless and it doesn't happen often. 99% of people are respectful, but if you're a professional, right, it can be pretty, uh, pretty bad. It can be pretty devastating to your career to have some rando POS from a seminar, uh, you know, put you out for six months because they just had to try some heel hook nonsense. <laughs> He's never gonna shut the fuck Whoa. up about oh, that. Son, I just knifed oh, NBK. You don't even realize what you've started. Every single conversation is gonna finish well. I knifed NBK. He's gone quiet now. He's off to have a victory wank. No. <laughs> oh no, you got the bomb. Oh, actually, I'm closing the door. What? 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 My <laughs> betrayal! Betrayal! I betrayal! Did. It was an accident. Jam. Oh, what was that? What was that, you fucking mong? Fucking 360 no scope horse shit in Counter Strike. Fuck off. What you did before the. Oh no, no, no! I don't, I don't have this in me. I don't have this in me. I want it off my screen. And. It's... Nope. Nope. I just. I don't want to get demonetized, guys. Beset on all sides by idiots. That is a great end. Yeah, uh, I'm still probably gonna have to edit out that uh, that profanity, man. Is it even a CS:GO video if they don't slur repeatedly? Probably not. But nonetheless, that was a good one. That was a lot of fun. And uh, why did I think it was 2017? It was 2016. Well, anyway, guys, this was cool. Thanks for joining me. Oh, and of course, I gotta say thank you to our patrons. On the Patreon. If you want access to some exclusive content, Patreon is the place. Cole Foss, thanks to our Lieutenant Tier patrons who have access to an exclusive room on the Discord and input for suggestions on my videos. Thanks to Cole Foster, Command Unit, Caffeinated, Jakob Flavius, Chris, Dr. Shadowcop, Portal World Time, Brandon Armitage, Tell Ruin, and Astro Hunter. Oh, shoot. I guess it would help if I pulled it up, huh? Yeah, that, there it is. All right. Cool. Doing my part. All right, guys. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.